Welcome back guys, this is Ryan Schultz with E39 Source in my 2000 BMW E39 M5. It's a Silverstone car on the left. Um, if you have not yet seen part one of this ridiculous engine rebuild and car refresh, um, I encourage you to please go and do so. I'll put a link, uh, a box surrounding my car right now to go and see that. Uh, it should answer some questions if you're new to this project. If not, uh, today we're picking up part two. Uh, this is the uh, part with all of the work actually being done. Now, I'm not there as they're bolting camshafts in and putting pistons on the crankshaft. Um, however, I do go in. Uh, for a while, it was once a week. More recently, it's been every day, uh, just for a little bit, 10 minutes, 45 minutes, to see how things are going. Uh, they've been really awesome about letting me come in, take pictures, video, talk to everybody, walk around under my car. Stuff dealerships would never let you do in a million years. Um, so part one focused on the old engine, tearing the old engine down, sending out the block and heads to be, well, to a machine shop, not necessarily to be machined, but to be polished, cleaned up. They did a valve job on the heads. Um, and I think that part one ended with those components coming back. So here we're going to see the engine um, going together. I also had the rear subframe pulled out, replaced the axles with um, a lot less mileage I uh, used ones that weren't leaking but are in fantastic condition. Same thing with the differential. Put in a 2003 differential with 48,000 miles on it with new clut with new uh, seals. Um, brake lines, just a, a million different parts in the back. And originally they wanted to build the new engine first, have that ready to go, um, and then put that in the car and have the engine done and then focus on um, taking the rear end apart and doing all of that. Um, they actually changed the game plan. They wanted to get the rear end all done, the brakes done, the subframe bushings, differential bushings, uh, the brake lines, uh, the rear bearings and hubs, parking brake. Wanted to get all of that done, then focus on the engine. So when the engine's in the car, it's ready to be broken in. Uh, so we're going to see that change here in a little bit. Uh, but anyways, welcome to part two. We're going to start off under the car here in just a moment. Welcome to April 2nd, 2016. We're under the M5 right now. Not a whole lot has been done. You can see the iBox sway bar in there. I put that in. That's the original differential. Uh, the drive shaft is out. The one parking brake cable is hanging. Uh, we're coming up on the transmission and the shifter linkage now. That is the new Jubo, new flex disc in there, Guibo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the original engine, of course, is in the car. This is kind of a look at things as a before, before a lot of work uh, begins. You can see Joe there in the background checking things out. Uh, I brought the car in on March 11th, so this has been going on for a while. Here's the bottom end of the engine. He uh, ended up putting the pistons in the engine, putting the crankshaft in the engine, new caps, new bolts, everything in this thing's, um, nearly everything's brand new. You can see the pistons in there. Um, it got to that point and then the engine was covered up in plastic, sealed off so no, nothing gets in it, and kind of pushed to the side as they work on the subframe and everything in the rear. Um, at this point, all the pistons are in, but piston six, that was one that they didn't like the rings on, so they did re-ring piston six. You can see the car up in the air. We move to the next clip. Subframe is now out of the car. The rear suspension's hanging, and there's new brake lines on the car. These are Porsche and Audi spec nickel copper alloy brake lines that were molded to fit. They won't corrode. They won't rust. Uh, it's just going to be a great setup, and they go all the way to the back. That's on top of where the subframe would normally be. And then I went into ECS tuning, stainless steel braided end lines to the caliper. There's the old differential on the left, the new differential on the right. Quite of a bit, uh, quite a bit of an aesthetic appearance. Um, reason for replacing with the, the clutches in the old one were not always hooking up, so I just got a different one. Now looking at the subframe sitting on the ground, I ended up having the uh, the bracket for the uh, the front differential bracket um, reinforced so it took a little bit to get it back in there but of course new bushings as well there's those brake lines the line hanging for the headlight aim sensor get a good look at the fuel tank I did those straps last year yes that rust has been since cleaned up before it went on um, at this point I think the new hubs are in there there's new rear wheel bearings um, on both sides with all OEM parts and I also did the uh, dust shields around there um, the old ones were real rusty. I was able to get those for cheap and delivered the next day. Uh, so new new bearings, hubs, and uh, dust shields in the back. We can see the reinforcement plate welded in there on the um, front subframe mount, or the front differential mount on the subframe. Uh, that apparently is a weak point of the E39, everybody told me. 
So I just decided to do it while it's out. Also went with PowerFlex Street Differential Bushings, not the race. Put the purple ones in there. At this point, uh, engine work resumes. So the heads are on the block at this point. Uh, the timing chains are in there. Uh, they never took the camshafts out themselves. I'm sure the machine shop did. But if you get a look at all this, it, it, it all looks brand new. I'm so impressed with how everything came back from the machine shop. All cleaned up and polished. New timing chains, new sprockets. The Vanos went out to Dr. Vanos to be uh, rebuilt. Uh, it came back long before the block and heads did from the machine shop. Um, but this, this has been such an exciting project to see everything come apart, go together, looking almost like new, looking in the intake and the exhaust valves. The heads look new. It's phenomenal. Um, the lower, lower oil pan had not been put on yet, obviously, at that point. Uh, I, of course, I kept the original block and heads. They're from an O2 motor with 122,000 miles on it. I uh, kept the oil pan. So some of those parts do show their age, like the oil pan. There is no point in cleaning that up. It's an engine that will get dirty again. A um, couple of repeat clips in here. I come in the next day. You can see the throttle actuators on there. Put a new water pump in it. Um, every piece of rubber, every gasket, every hose, uh, any hardware as far as bolts, nuts, washers, clips, all of those uh, items have been replaced. Um, that's the throttle actuator there that I'm fiddling with. You can see an alternator on the floor over there to the right. I did keep the alternator, seeing that a new alternator is for some reason now a staggering $1,000. There's the oil pump or the oil filter housing that goes into the, the motor mount. The bearing on the alternator felt great. There were no check lights before. I didn't see a, re, a, a need to replace it. Uh, the lower oil pan is on at this point. We've got new sensors, obviously new gaskets down there. Um, things are looking great. It's at a weird angle that day too. Um, so here we've got the oil spray rails, as I will call them, on top of the camshafts. We've already got a valve cover over there. Spark plugs are in there. Went with the, um, the NGKs, those BRP6QUP, something like that. Um, I put them in my 330. It seemed to be a great spark plug. Uh, it's the whatever they call the double platinum or something. It has four uh, heads on top of the spark plug. Um, looks like the new pulleys are on there. I did bite the, pull bite the bullet and put new pulleys on there. The Vanos is installed. Um, that greenish tinted hose on top actually cracked, so we uh, uh, replaced that. Uh, as I said, every hose uh, is new. Nice new pulleys, so that should be nice and quiet on the front of the engine. That rail there on the front that we see, uh, that was all cleaned out. And this red stuff is just assembly lubricant. It's a red line assembly lube when this engine first starts. It's not only going to sound horrible, but it hasn't been lubricated or anything uh, at all. And the oil pump will take some time to pump the oil up there. So they use assembly lubricant uh, when putting it together. You can see the hole up there where the starter motor is going to go and attach to the flywheel. Tried to reuse the starter motor from the old engine. It kind of disintegrated when we took it apart. So I did go ahead and buy a new Bosch uh, starter motor. Uh, this is the old engine still in the car. You can see it's uh, about ready to come out. All the air box, the intake's taken apart, plenum lids off, wiring harnesses on top. Here's the new engine, all but ready to be put in the car. The throttle bodies are not on yet. The plenum's not on yet. We had to wait for a couple of parts. Uh, I forget what specifically they were at this point. I think we needed a few O-rings and a couple things to come in the next day. Uh, so there was a bit of a delay. I did reuse the original coils. Uh, from 2002. The coils on my, my old engine at 192,000 miles were original, so I didn't see why I couldn't keep going. Probably the next day, we've got a wiring harness on there. The plenum's on. He cleaned all of this beautifully. Um, we got new throttle position sensors too, by the way, new cam sensors, all that. All, all the sensors are new. Uh, but the lower plenum's on there. Snorkels are on. He cleaned out all that stuff. Those uh, oil return hoses are new. The cyclones, the oil separators, that's the one part I, I did not replace, and I may do that myself when I get the car back. So now we see hanging control arms and the lack of an S62. Boy, is that bizarre to look in there and see nothing. It's very dirty, yes. And actually, no, I'm not cleaning it. I did not clean it. Uh, reason being that is 100% free um, rust prevention. You know, I don't plan, this car will never see another winter. I don't even plan on driving it in the rain. But I'm not going to go in there and detail the hell out of something that I'm never going to see. Also replaced those thrust arm bushings. They had about 40,000 miles on them and weren't looking too pretty, so those got replaced. Front of the engine, the belts are on. That's the old engine. My apologies. Uh, the old engine's out. It is currently for sale if anybody's looking for a beautifully running 
192,000 mile, 2000 model year S62 that has had head gaskets and many services, no check engine lights. Uh, the transmission still attached to it there. The exhaust manifolds are still on it. Uh, the car does not weigh a whole lot right now without that in it. It's about five or 600 pounds lighter with no engine, transmission, drive shaft. The differentials back there, all of that stuff in the back is all done. Um, very weird to look at that and see so much space. We can see the slave cylinder there that operates the uh, clutch. Uh, this day, the transmission has been disconnected from the engine. He modified the UUC dual shear selector rod uh, for use t for to be used with my E6545i short shift kit. It just needed a little bit of grinding on the rear shears to be able to fit the other shifter. Uh, we got into a waiting game here. There was a shaft seal in there that needed to be replaced, and whatever the throwout bearing, whatever uh, shaft that goes on was worn, so they replaced that as well. You can see the exhaust manifolds on the new engine, some radiator hoses. The beauty covers are still, as of today, not over the spark plugs yet, and the plenum lid is not on. Those will be finishing touches. The old clutch pressure plate and flywheel had 84,000 miles on them. They were done by Dave Walter BMW in Akron, Ohio. We're about to take a look at the condition of those parts. The clutch itself wasn't terrible. had some surface uh, material left on it. Probably could have gotten another year or two out of it. Uh, that wasn't the, um, the problem point. When we do, and, and that would be the... Um, pressure plate there that was fine the flywheel itself did show where um, whenever whenever it was resurfaced for the last clutch the dealership did it use tools that were far too abrasive and left um, scuffs or marred the surface enough that you could actually feel it very unimpressive work from the dealer all the shifter linkages new all those bushings there's the 545i shifter uh, installed in the in the shifter carrier um, we did the, the input shaft for the um, selecting rod on the transmission. That seal was replaced as well. Um, and then obviously all the bushings. This is kind of the last day I saw it before the engine went in the car. All of those parts are new. The transmission's ready to be bolted to the engine. Uh, all the accessories are on the engine. Here's the front subframe. I didn't bother cleaning any of this. It's rust prevention. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll clean what I can see. You can see the steering box there. I did end up having to replace the outer tie rods. I went with Lemforder on those parts. So we have new outer tie rods. I did the Pitman arm and the idler arm and all that before. Welcome the S62, the rebuilt S62 to its new home of my 2000 M5. It has been installed in the vehicle. The uh, engine and transmission are in there, obviously new motor mounts. At this point, it had yet to be plugged in. Uh, that took him about 10 seconds. I was amazed at how quickly that went. You can see I moved my oil cap over from the uh, other engine, and it looks great. Everything's bolted in there. It's ready for a bit of a cleanup. Uh, plenum lid and the beauty covers over the uh, spark plugs. Uh, at that point, the coolant was even in. We're going to take a brief look at the old engine and try to get a look inside those exhaust valves to see how bad they were after 192,000 miles. That engine is currently, as of May 8, 2016, bolted to a pallet, ready to be picked up, shipped, whatever. I am looking, I prefer local pickup. I'm asking $2,900 for it. It's a beautifully running S62. As we attempt to focus and look inside at the exhaust valves where the manifold would connect, it's very black in there, but there are no large clumps of carbon like I honestly expected to see. It's not that bad. This engine was removed from the car in 2008, disassembled, and uh, carbon cleaned. So maybe that's why it's only had uh, around 84, 86,000 miles since all that was done in 2008. It's dirty in there, but not enough that it would affect performance or uh, economy all that much, in my opinion. And how exciting is this? The first quart of oil. I happened to be there when they were ready for oil. So here it goes. We're using a 5W30 full synthetic BMW twin power turbo or whatever the hell that is. Um, purely for the break-in. I know it's a 2002 engine. That's what it should run. Uh, for the break-in, I'm gonna use a lighter weight oil. Actually put eight liters in and um, it was just at the top of the line on the dipstick. Obviously when it starts and runs through the oil filter housing, it's going to ingest a lot of that oil as it fills up all the crevices between a crankshaft and pistons and you know further up in the engine. Um, but there's the first quart of many. Now this next clip is a little scary. Um, I actually wasn't there for this. The owner of the shop uh, texted me a video. So they got the engine in, they uh, you know checked the oil level, all that, put power steering fluid in it, had the coolant ready to go and um, then pulled the, uh, f the relay for the, um, the fuel pump and started to crank the engine over to prime it for start. Let some oil move around, get all the moving parts moving. Um, 
I wasn't there for that. They did not start it yet. That is happening tomorrow on May 9th. That will be probably part of part three of this video series. Uh, but he sent me this video. This is, again, no engine starting, just turning over. It sounds very scary. It sounds like multiple um, connecting rod bearings have failed and the pistons are slamming all over the place in there. I'm going to play that now. So we ran into a bit of a 10-day delay here, unfortunately. Um, I think that last clip, the engine turning over without starting, was on a Friday. Everybody went home for the weekend, came back in on Monday, and the car's leaking coolant, uh, which uh, obviously is not good. So the transmission had to come back down. It was some line or hose at the back end of the engine. The transmission come, came down in the morning. He fixed the leak very quickly and uh, went to put the transmission back in, and the uh, pressure plate needs to be reset. The E39M5 stock system uses a self-adjusting clutch, and the pressure plate needed to be reset. There's a specific tool for that. BMW dealers are supposed to have this tool. It's something like an $1,800 tool, so I can't go on Amazon and buy it. And uh, none of the six, five or six local Ohio BMW dealers were able to get their shit together enough to locate this tool. One thought they had it, uh, but would not lend it out. So the uh, pressure plate ended up going to this dealer, uh, whose name I will not mention. They had it an entire week before they found out that they could actually not find the tool and sent the pressure plate back. Uh, so it got back to the shop. The guy working on the engine, Bill, took it and took matters into his own hand and uh, fabricated a tool to reset the pressure plate himself. And then we moved on to the next issue. So now that the transmission's back in, they got the drive shaft in, it was time to put the exhaust on. I didn't want to turn the key until the exhaust was on. It'd be really loud. Without it, they want to be able to listen for engine noises or problems. Um, so the exhaust gaskets that ECS Tuning included in this huge kit, it may have been in the transmission kit, since they know you're going to have the exhaust down, they include the gaskets. There's six gaskets, two of type A, four of type B. They sent six of type A. So we had to wait another couple days, I think it was one or two days, to get the uh, additional four exhaust gaskets. They came in early Thursday morning, he put the exhaust back up there, and then finally turned the key. So here are the clips from that. So it's really hard to tell on camera with just the microphone of a Canon DSLR camera. Um, there was, in that start, and that's the only time I've heard this engine start, there was a uh, minor Vanos rattle on startup for like three quarters of a second. It's been rebuilt by Dr. Vanos. This system just needs to, to wear in, be broken in, uh, get some oil circulation with some oil pressure more than idle, which is, as far as I know at, at this point, the only RPMs this engine has seen. Um, the loud noise that we're hearing is the lifter tick, and there's at least a couple on both cylinder banks that are still dry, have not been pumped up with their oil hydraulic fluid. I don't know exactly how these systems work, but I know that they, uh, it's, it's very common that they tick, especially uh, this engine hasn't really run since last August of 2015. We're in May. That's May 20th, 2016 right now. Um, everyone has assured me that uh, once the car gets out on the road, sees some miles, sees some minor load, um, warm oil at pressure, all of this will shut up and hopefully stay away as long as I keep driving it, which, which uh, certainly will be the case. Um, so everything else seems to be fine. This engine spent about 30 minutes sitting at idle. It has a very smooth idle of uh, 500 RPM. The engine has produced no check engine codes. The check engine light is not on. The DSC brake and ABS lights are mysteriously on, reporting faults at both rear wheel speed sensors. Uh, we did put new bearings and, hub back, and hubs back there. Uh, there's like 29 LCM faults. There's IHKA faults for the, the heating and cooling systems. So we're not sure what's going on with that exactly at this point. Uh, really, we feel that the car just needs to get out on the road, see some miles. The systems will realize that everything's okay. It's been totally taken apart, disassembled, battery plugged in, unplugged, 
Um, it, it just needs some time to, uh, to, to relearn itself, if you will. Uh, so we're going to give it that time and diagnosis necessary. Not to mention that every adaptation and parameter has been reset. Uh, right now we're waiting on another power steering hose. I did the lower one. It's turning out that the top one's leaking as well after only 4,000 miles and one year. So we'll be looking into getting the BMW dealership to cover that under their warranty. Uh, but I certainly want that fixed before I, return, I uh, receive the car back from this service. Uh, so we're waiting on the power steering line. Um, it needs an alignment quite badly, which should be happening today, the 20th. I'm going to head in there later, and this, all this will be part of part three probably. Um, so we'll see <clears throat> how it aligns. Obviously, it's going to be really bad at first, seeing that both the front and the rear subframe have been out on the ground for a couple of weeks during this uh, process. Uh, so we'll get it aligned. They're going to put some miles on it. We'll keep an eye on the fault, see what comes and goes. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit in the car yesterday with the new clutch. Uh, for some reason, the clutch pedal is super light, even lighter than my 330. So I'm hoping that with some miles and a little bit of use, uh, that tightens up a little bit. They're all stock components, exactly what I took out. Uh, the shifter itself, it's a 545i uh, short shift kit. feels unbelievable. Uh, really short, tight, notchy uh, gear throws uh, with very little play. Uh, we're talking like a millimeter. It's, it's fantastic. So I can't wait to have the car back. I'm beyond excited. Uh, that'll be part three, a review of all of that. And um, hope you guys enjoyed part two. We're going to wrap up with a quick uh, picture slideshow here. Anyways, here's the U-joint on the drive shaft. A little bit of rust on there. It's not the prettiest thing. If you get a hand on each side and work it back and forth, there's absolutely zero play in the drive shaft. And uh, I was not advised to do anything with it. So we're going to put that back in. You can see the new center support bearing there ready to go. So that'll be nice and quiet. Moving on to the old axles. These things were not pretty. Not only is the paint deteriorating on the axle part of it itself, um, they're both leaking fluid from the seals. The, the boots would need to be removed, repacked. Don't know if they're dry or not. Uh, so I ended up buying uh, new axles. Not new, but from a 2001 with 100,000 miles. Another shot of the old axles. Not pretty. I always figured the differential was, was leaking. That uh, turned out not to be the case. It has been the axles the entire time. I look at the new axles after I just very briefly cleaned them up with some brake clean and some shop towels. Um, the boots are in great condition, no cracks, no leaks. Uh, the paint itself, there's just not even any scratches in it, no signs of rust. They're from a 2001 M5 with 99,000 miles, so they should have plenty of life left in them. My reason for uh, not replacing with new axles was because they are uh, quite expensive per side. I think they're five or six hundred dollars per side versus these I picked up for around two hundred dollars uh, used from Adam. Uh, as you can see, in very good condition. The old hub, uh, I think the bearing is on the other side of that. Um, I, I always figured they were original, but uh, the mechanic said that it, uh, it looked like the axle nut had been off before, and uh, they had been replaced at some point in the past, probably long before my ownership, so it's nice to get a fresh pair of rear axles or rear bearings and hubs in there. Um, so that's neat. There's the new ones. Pick those up from ECS Tuning. Just for fun, it's kind of neat to look at the bolts that hold the subframe in. There's four of them. They're absolutely ginormous. I did replace those as well as the uh, bushings, as we'll call them, or the seals on the bottom of that. Here's everything all done underneath. I did not bother cleaning the subframe. This is not where I'm putting my time and resources. It's cleaning the underside of the car. It's a car. You can also see there's new upper uh, guide links and new upper control arms in the back, so a half suspension refresh in the rear. I've already done the springs and the struts back there and the ball joints, so everything else was nice and healthy. Uh, there's a look at the new axles, the new differential. Um, I am doing the CV joint on the back end of the axle that, or of the uh, drive shaft that'll connect up to the differential. We can also see the two black cables on the top part of the screen. Those are new parking brake cables. Did both of them. The one was broken, but uh, decided to do them in pairs since the drive shaft was down. Here's the Miley HD front uh, lower control arm bushings, the thrust arms. Um, as I said before, mine didn't have that many miles on them. They were not that old. But uh, right in the center there where the bolt goes through, the rubber on either side of that, uh, the tapered edges uh, was cracked. So we went ahead and pressed new bushings in there. Here's the starter motor with the heat shielding on it. That's the new one. It's Bosch. If you go to ECS, they're like $354 for the air quotes genuine BMW, which is the same as the Bosch. Uh, the people that are doing this job for me are a registered Bosch dealer and picked this up for about $185 or uh, possibly less. Uh, we did new motor mounts on the front subframe. Obviously, both of those, you can see the um, outer tie rods complete with new hardware on the outside of the subframe there, ready to go. 
Decided to replace the water pump as well. It does have a steel or aluminum impeller, so these things do seem to last a while. Uh, I have no reason to believe that the one on the engine that I bought had uh, been had been replaced in the past, so we went ahead and ordered a new one. These uh, these little things are pretty expensive. They're about four hundred and forty dollars from ECS Tuning, but uh, definitely won't have to worry about that in the future. There's the top of it. Comes all in all, ready for the thermostat to go in there. There's the full exhaust system. They took it off all in one piece. You can see the Eisenman race cans on the end with the uh, heat shielding on top into the stock uh, resonators, which I'm not changing. I am replacing the four oxygen sensors, both the uh, pre-cat and the post-cat, and uh, that's going to be going back up in there, I think, today or tomorrow, Monday. Uh, there's those tie rods in the bags from Lemforder. They included the hardware. If you buy from FCP Euro, you can get the Lemforders with the hardware. Say they don't include the hardware, they do. Keep that in mind. Here we can see the uh, new flywheel on the end of the engine. Everything looks nice and pretty with brand new shiny parts in there. This is when the transmission had to come down for a couple of days to uh, get the uh, pressure plate reset. And there we get a look at the clutch sitting in the pressure plate. These are just new luck uh, OEM components. I got 80 some thousand miles out of the first system uh, with no slippage, so I cannot ask for any more. I wanted to wrap up part two with a clip of this engine running, and as of yesterday, we were finally able to do that. So that's the delay, and I apologize for that. It's out of my control, unfortunately. So um, hopefully I'm going to have the car back by uh, the middle of next week. They're going to spend some time, get that power steering line fixed, uh, get an alignment done, put some miles on it, test it, uh, just, just, just work the kinks out in the car. Check for codes, check for leaks. Um, run it through some hot and cold cycles, and, and that's going to take a few days. So I'm hoping to have it back next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe uh, maybe as late as Friday. And then when I get it back, I'm under pretty strict instructions. Uh, nothing over 3,500 RPM for 500 miles, no highway usage for 500 miles, no heavy throttle, obviously, dumping clutches. That's not happening. Um, so we're just going to have to be gentle with it for a while uh, as the engine does break in. Uh, so that'll be uh, a different experience, but it'll be exciting. And uh, after a couple of weeks with this, I'll probably throw part three up on the channel. Uh, that's going to be just a review of how everything feels, how it drives, is it even noticeable from before? What just you know, it'll, it'll be it'll be the full review of uh, what it's like to have all of this uh, done at once. And it, it's a, been a crazy process. It's been in there for nearly three months, but I'm really hoping it's worth it here in the next couple of days. You know, when I get it back. So. Uh, That'll be part three. Thanks for watching part two. Leave your comments and questions and constructive criticism down below, please. And I will talk to you in a future video. Bye-bye.